even with them seizing my property, I still have to pay taxes. James Dupree is an accomplished artist whose work has appeared in exhibits around the world over the past three decades. In 2005, he bought a warehouse in Philadelphia's Mantua neighborhood and worked to turn it into a studio. My original plans for the building was a mixed-use space where not only could I um, work here, but I would have a number of other things going that would supplement my income and also afford other artists to come here and, and work and express their ideas about making art. The building was dilapidated, but Dupree took the risk and set about fixing it up. It hadn't been repaired in years, and the fact that it was so large uh, and extended a city block, it was an automatic love affair where, where the vision that I had, nobody could see it. Now that's all being threatened by the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority. Through blight, they had seized the deed and title to my property and filed intimate domain and that um, they were taking my property. They're supposed to be charged with uh, redeveloping, rehabilitating inner city neighborhoods. But the history of Philadelphia's Redevelopment Authority is really one that also contains a lot of eminent domain abuse. Institute for Justice senior attorney Scott Bullock is an expert in eminent domain, the government's power under the Constitution to take private property when it stands in the way of public projects such as building roads or public schools. Bullock was the lead counsel in the 2005 Supreme Court case, Kelo v. New London, which involved a local government seizing property and giving it to a private developer to build a hotel complex. The high court ruled that it was constitutional as long as the government said they were trying to increase tax revenues. With Aquinas Realty Partners, PRA made plans to convert the block that Dupree's studio is on to a multi-use area with retail and a high-end grocery store. Well, grocery store is just like any other private business. Uh, it is privately owned, privately held. It is about as far away from a public use as one could imagine. And there's a question of whether the city can even get a supermarket to take up occupancy. They said they'd like to get a grocery store in, uh, uh, in the area, but there's no contract for it. There's no really, from my understanding, any real interest from a, a private parties in doing so. Under eminent domain, the owner is supposed to be compensated. The city offered Dupree $640,000 for his property, even though the estimated market value is $2.2 million. Nobody checked to see the contents of my building. I had went down to City Hall and filed a complaint, and even with them seizing my property, I still have to pay taxes. We got a paper saying that they were going to put a lien on the property that they seize. Property owners are treated horribly by the eminent domain process. Uh, it is very difficult to win one of these cases. It is very difficult to pay lawyers in order to challenge something like this. You very rarely get back what you put into the building in the first place. In eminent domain, the government holds all of the advantages. Fortunately, in my personal case, we have found that the city government has made a major mistake. Ironically, the inefficiency of municipal bureaucracy may give Dupree his best chance of beating City Hall. In an attempt to classify Dupree's property as blighted, an early step in many eminent domain proceedings, PRA ended up condemning only two of the three addresses his property sits on. Dupree has started circulating petitions calling attention to the city's actions, and he's challenging PRA in court. A decision is expected over the next few months. The one thing that has saved me is the enormous amount of people that have come to support me. We now have 2,200 petitions that have gone directly to the mayor's office and the council person's office that uh, uh, is responsible for this.